Hi everyone, welcome back to the thickest part of the video series from Zero to Sidekick on JBoss BPM Suite version 6. This video we will take a look at our stuff that we've done in the previous videos and we will create a decision table. It will obviously be a very simple one, but it should give you an idea of how to go ahead when doing decision tables in the tool. Okay, let's take a look at the artifacts that we created last time. First beginning with a look at the rules, and you can see I have created a few more ones and we'll take a look at them later on. The data model still consists of the three objects which we created in one of the first videos, being the contract, the insurer, so the person who is asking for insurance, and the object that we want to cover with an insurance. Okay, let's close this and take a look at one of the new rules, which is just an extension or a duplicate of the previous one here covering a small detached home with uh, more than 150 square meter which increases the policy by five percent and going along with that the test scenarios which will cover the new created rules so we have a full coverage of the created rules with the supporting test cases Okay, now let's start doing a guided decision table. We'll give it the name of insurance type because we want to cover simple rule like get adding percentage if you have a standard premium or eco contract. So now we'll in the decision editor, it started automatically for us, and we can start filling out the different parts of the decision table. We will start with adding a new column which will hold the name of the rule flow group which uh, the rules of this table will belong to. So we've created it, then we go into options and find the attribute that we want to fill and we'll give a default value of base calc um, which is more or less to represent the base calculation. So now we'll add the first condition. For that we go into add simple condition. We will select the object that we want to look at and that is in our case the contract that was given to the rules engine. We'll give it a binding which is also called contract with small letter. We will take a look at the field type of our contract and we want to check it later on against string values so as the operator we'll select equal to. So last thing to do here for the condition column is to give it a title, a column header description that the end user will then see on top of the decision table. Okay now that's the condition column is created. We will create a new column again and have this as an action column. So we'll set a value. Again, we will go into our binded contract and we will update the field of discount. Well, that's the plan of the rule. And we'll give it a column header preset discount and apply our rule. Now you can see in the bottom of the guided editor the rule table. We'll create our first row. You see the rule flow group name is uh, defaulted. We'll give our rule some name. It can be anything you want. We will check the entrance type field for the value echo and if it's echo then we will put minus 5 as a discount 
and another rule for standard inferences where we also look for the string equivalent of standard and it will have no impact on the discount. And as a final rule we will add premium one looking for the insurance type premium and we'll increase the discount. So looking at the source version of the table you can see that even the decision tables have been changed into the jewels language. So we'll save this and our decision table is ready to go. So I hope you liked this sixth video of the series from zero to sidekick and uh, stay tuned for the next one.